More than a trillion insects are raised each year as a high protein, low carbon animal feed, but the practice might have an ethical blind spot. Insects are strange, beautiful creatures. Butterflies have the ability to see part of the light spectrum that's invisible to human eyes and use their ultraviolet pattern to find their way to tasty plants. Moths are able to use Earth's magnetic field to orient themselves on journeys hundreds of miles. Bees waggle their butts to tell their hive mates where to find a juicy stash of nectar. Insects and humans both share the same world, yet we have a completely different sensory universe. Insect farming is booming in a major way, and in terms of sheer number of animals impacted, this is a transformation of a speed and scale that humans have never seen before. Humans have had a strange relationships with bugs. We squash them, spray them, eat them, and crush them to make pretty dyes. But at the same time, we also worry about plummeting wild insect populations and rely on them to pollinate the crops we eat. And with the industrialization of insect farming, bugs are also being offered up as a solution to human-caused climate crisis. But before we discuss that, we need to ask some really basic questions about insects. Can they feel? And if so, what should we do about it? We're at the starting point of a conversation about insect welfare. One of the key questions here is whether the insects are sentient and have the capability to feel pain and suffer. Pigs, chickens and fish are already widely recognised as sentient. In 2021, the UK government recognised sentience in squids and octopuses, as well as crabs, lobsters and all vertebrate animals. Research on insect sentience is much more patchy. There are more than half a million known insect species and only a handful have ever been studied to see whether they can feel pain. Finding out whether another being can feel pain is really difficult, even when it comes to humans. Until the mid-1980s, babies in the US were routinely operated on with little or no anesthesia due to the mistaken belief that very young infants were incapable of perceiving pain. In one famous case, a premature baby in Maryland, born in 1985, underwent open heart surgery without any anaesthetic at all. When the boy's mother later questioned her doctor, she was told that premature babies couldn't feel pain, a scientific misunderstanding that was later overturned, partly thanks to campaigning. When searching for answers related to pain, there are a handbook of signs researchers look for. One is the presence of nociceptors, neurons that respond to the pain of stimuli from the outside world. Nociception isn't quite the same as feeling pain. When you touch a hot stove, your arm automatically jerks away before you feel the pain. This is because nociceptors have sent a nerve impulse that bypasses the brain altogether. But at the very minimum, the presence of nociceptors indicate that a bug has some sort of basic biology that makes it capable of experiencing pain. Almost every time scientists search for insect nociception, they find it. There is evidence for nociception in beetles, flies, bees and butterflies. There is also some good evidence that at least some insects can bring together sensory information in their brains and that their nisobe reactors are connected to their brains. On top of this, scientists have seen some evidence of insects grooming injured spots on their body. Some ants even rescue nestmates that have lost limbs after raids on termite mounds. Wound tending is generally seen as a sentient marker. The fact that scientists have found multiple indicators of sentience in certain insects is a reason enough to argue that these animals can have an unpleasant experience. The most commonly farmed insects include crickets, beetles and flies, and we know a lot less about their lives than those of bees and ants, which are pretty well studied in insect terms. Even fewer studies have been done on insects when they're still larvae. This adds another problem because mealworms and black soldier flies larvae are usually killed before they're adults. This is the problem with the insect sentient question. It's one big fractal unknown that breaks down into a thousand smaller unknowns. 
Everywhere we turn, there's another question. That's particularly because sentient researchers have tended to focus on animals a little closer to humans along the evolutionary tree. Non-fish and non-mammal sea creatures are also overlooked. While scientists are debating insect sentience, the bug farming industry is growing at speed. Humans have eaten insects for centuries, but generally, those insects were caught in the wild or farmed on small farms. Now startups are building mega factories to house tens of millions of bugs in one place. French startup Dinsect is building a factory that can produce 200,000 metric tons of insect based products a year, mainly for pet and animal food. Other large facilities are being opened or being built in the Netherlands, the United States and Denmark. If humans are going to farm animals that are candidates for sentience, there should be welfare standards. Right now, there are no widely recognised welfare guidelines for farmed insects, and few laws that especially require insect farmers to meet certain welfare standards. The EU body that represents insect farmers has set out five guidelines borrowed from vertebrate welfare law, but companies are generally left to decide for themselves what high welfare might look like. Insect as food and feed is 100% happening. It's growing fast and it's not going to collapse in the next 10 years. The numbers we're talking about are so vast that even a small improvement in welfare standards can make the difference to the lives of trillions of maybe sentient creatures. Would you eat a bug burger? Let us know in the comment section below.